Hello and welcome to Newsday with Jeff Ahern. I'm your host, Jeff Ahern. Today's top story, Sam Bankman-Fried, or SBF, has been accused of stealing $10 billion from his crypto trading firm FTX to help prop up companies like his struggling Alameda Research Group. SBF is a good nickname for him, since he was stealing billions flagrantly, though not flagrantly enough for the New York Times, who decided to write a puff piece about him instead. With questions so light, I'm amazed they didn't include what his holiday plans were. These weren't even softball questions. This was more of a t-ball setup. This man stole billions, and they treated him like he was there to promote a movie, always giving him the benefit of the doubt. And with SBF, there's much more than doubt. There's guilt, like Madoff level. And I don't recall you asking Bernie Madoff what his favorite color was. Not that they asked Freed that. They covered harder hitting things, like his favorite video game. The Times claimed the reason for Freed's downfall was a run on deposits. Well, that's what eventually happens in a Ponzi scheme. Stop trying to portray Freed as George Bailey trying to save the crypto bank, when clearly he's Mr. Potter. So why go easy on such a corrupt man? Because the Democrat Party benefits from him. Freed spent millions to get Biden elected and nearly $40 million overall on Democrat campaigns, second only to George Soros which is why the Times smeared Vaseline all over their supposedly journalistic lens. Tech blog Gizmodo was scathing in its assessment of the Times interview, saying that the Times makes it sound like SBF just overextended himself in an otherwise reputable venture. In reality, SBF had built a house of cards where each individual card is itself a house of cards. That's what actual journalism sounds like, something that has as much chance of returning to the Times as deposits do to SBF's investors.